In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a complete guide to Zapier. I'm going to be teaching you how to set up things like zaps, as well as more advanced features in the automation software. No matter if you're a complete beginner or you've got a little bit of experience using this app, I'm going to be able to teach something and you'll get some great value out of this. So if you find this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing and let's get right into it. First, open your web browser and go to zapier.com. Once you're on the homepage, you'll see a couple of options to start your free trial. You can either click on start free with email or start free with Google. If you choose to sign up with email, you'll need to enter your email address, first name and last name. After filling in your details, click on the get started free button. This process is quick and straightforward and within a few moments you'll find yourself inside the Zapier dashboard ready to start automating your tasks. Once you're inside the dashboard, take a moment to familiarize yourself with the layout. The dashboard is your central hub in Zapier where you can create new zaps, manage existing ones and explore different automation possibilities. To kick things off, let's create a new zap. Look to the top left corner of the screen and click on the Create button. This is where the magic happens. Zapier gives you several options, but let's start with the basics by creating a zap. Zapier has recently introduced a feature called Copilot Beta, which is an AI powered assistant designed to help you set up automations even faster. With Copilot, you can simply describe the process you want to automate and it will guide you through the steps to make it happen. For example, let's say you want to automate the process of creating a Trello card whenever you react to a Slack message. Just type this into Copilot. When I add a reaction to a Slack message, create a card in Trello. Once you've entered your desired automation, click Send, and Copilot will show you the exact steps needed to set up this zap. As Copilot walks you through the setup, you'll see each step laid out clearly. For each step, you can click on it to customize the details further. Let's go through an example together. First, you'll need to connect your Slack account to Zapier. Zapier will prompt you to authorize the connection, which typically involves logging into your Slack account and granting the necessary permissions. After connecting your Slack account, you'll need to select the specific event you want to trigger the zap. In this case, we're going to choose new message posted to channel, but there are many other options available depending on what you want to automate. Once you've selected the event, you'll be prompted to choose the Slack account you want to use. If you've already connected your account, it should appear in the drop down menu. If not, you can add a new account at this stage. After selecting the account, you'll need to set up the trigger. Triggers are the conditions that must be met for your zap to run. In this example, we might set the trigger to be a specific emoji reaction added to a message in a certain channel. Zapier allows you to fine tune these settings to ensure that your zap only runs when you want it to. Once the trigger is set up, Zapier will give you the option to test it to make sure everything is working correctly. Testing is an important step because it allows you to catch any issues before they affect your workflow. However, if you're confident that everything is set up correctly, you can skip the test for now and move on to the next step, setting up the action. The action is what happens when the trigger conditions are met. In our case, we want to create a Trello card. Zapier's Copilot will have already suggested this action based on your initial input, just like with a trigger. You'll need to connect your Trello account if you haven't already done so. A pop-up window will appear asking you to log into Trello and authorize the connection. After connecting Trello, you'll be able to customize the details of the action, such as selecting the board where the new card should be created, naming the card, and filling in other fields like the description, due date, and assigned members. Zapier's interface makes it easy to map data from your trigger step to your action step. For example, you can automatically pull the message text from Slack and use it as the title of your Trello card. Once you've configured all the necessary details, click continue to review your setup. At this point, Zapier will give you a summary of your zap, showing the trigger and action you've defined. If everything looks good, you can proceed to the final step, publishing your zap. To publish your zap, simply click on the publish button in the top right corner of the screen. Once published, your zap will start running immediately, automating the process you've just set up. 
but don't worry. You can always go back and edit your zap later if you need to make adjustments or add more steps. Speaking of adding more steps, Zapier allows you to insert additional actions in the middle of your zap, such as integrating other apps or adding filters. Filters are particularly useful because they let you control when your zap runs based on specific criteria. For example, you could set up a filter to only create a Trello card if the Slack message contains a certain keyword or if it's posted in a specific channel. Now that your zap is up and running, let's take a look at how you can manage and view your zaps. Click on the zaps button in the top left corner of the screen to return to the home page. Here you'll see a list of all your zaps along with their status, whether they're active or inactive. You can click on any zap to view its details, edit it or turn it on or off. This dashboard is your control center for all the automations you've set up, allowing you to easily manage your workflows as your needs evolve. Next, let's talk about adding members to your Zapier account. Collaboration is key when using Zapier, especially if you're working with a team. To invite members, click on your profile icon in the top right corner of the screen. Then select settings from the drop down menu. In the settings menu, you'll see an option for members. Click on it and you'll be able to invite new members by entering their email addresses. You can also assign specific permissions to each member controlling what they can see and do within your Zapier workspace. For example, you might want to give some members full access to create and manage Zaps, while others might only need view only access. Once you've set the permissions, click invite and your new members will receive an email invitation to join your Zapier account. Finally, let's explore some of the pre-built Zaps that Zapier offers. These are templates for common automation workflows that you can use as a starting point Back on the home page, you'll notice sections showcasing the most popular zaps, top trending zaps of the week, and recommended zaps based on your specific use case, whether it's lead management, sales, or project tracking. Click into any of these sections to browse the available templates. When you find one that looks useful, click on it to view the details and see how it's set up. If you like what you see, click use template to add it to your account. You can then customize the template to fit your needs, adjusting the triggers, actions, and other settings as necessary. This is a great way to get started with Zapier, especially if you're new to automation and want to see how different workflows are constructed. And that is my beginner's guide to Zapier. If you found this video useful, be sure to go down below and like and subscribe. Comment down below if it helped you out and let me know if there's any other software you'd like me to make a video on or maybe you want me to make a more in-depth guide on Zapier itself. Let me know and I will go ahead and do that. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.